In this session, we are going to discuss about component display theory. Teachers or instructors try to create learning environment for students so that learning takes place. There are several educationists and researchers who and psychologists who have given different theories and models that enhance learning. Component display theory is one of those theories. This theory was put forth by David Merrill in 1983. While teaching, we set learning objectives. Based on these learning objectives, we decide what strategies to be used to teach the students and also we decide the test items or what items to be included in the test or the exam so that we can measure the learning that has taken place. CDT or Component Display Theory suggests two dimensions. Uh, one is content dimension and another one is performance dimension. Based on these two dimensions, the teachers can decide what kind of learning objectives to set, how strategies could be used so that those learning objectives are met and uh, what kind of test items to be decided or designed so that uh, we can measure how learning takes place. Let's get into the details of these dimensions which are suggested by component display theory. The matrix that uh, is suggested by component display theory that allows us or that uh, helps us to classify the learning objectives. Now let us go ahead and learn about the matrix. Now you are seeing the performance content matrix on the screen. This matrix shows and the row shows levels of performance which are shown by the learner. Remember, use and find are the three performances suggested by component display theory. Let us take a look at the performance content matrix again. We just saw the types of content which is given in the column on the left hand side. Now let us carry on to see the levels of performance. Remember is associated with recalling previously learned knowledge. Remember is the first category of performance dimension. Remember, as the name suggests, involves remembering or recalling from the memory. The cognitive activity that is happening in the learner's mind is recalling the learned knowledge from the memory. So the learner can recall certain concepts or certain definitions from the memory and write it or speak about it whenever asked about. Otherwise, the learner can also be presented with different examples and the learner can identify the correct example which is fitting into the category which has been asked for. It involves performances such as labeling parts of a plant, listing names of all states of India, identifying freedom fighters or monuments from the given pictures, defining the definitions or saying the definitions are examples of uh, the cognitive activity of remember. Use is associated with using the learned knowledge in familiar as well as new situations. The next performance from the performance dimension is use. Use is associated with using the learned knowledge in familiar as well as new situations. Here if the learner has learned certain principles, if the learner comes across certain new situations, uh, the learner will be able to identify whether that situation is associated with that principle. For example, if the learner has learnt about upthrust or Archimedes principle. So when the learner sees that any block of wood, so when next time when the learner sees a block of wood floating in a glass of water, the learner should be able to associate that this is a effect of upthrust or this is the effect of the Archimedes principle. If the learner while watching television sees a huge iceberg floating on sea, he should be able to associate that this why is such a huge uh, block of ice floating so easily on sea is because of Archimedes principle or uh, upthrust is what explains or upthrust is the reason for the block of ice floating on water. If a learner has learnt about how to construct a triangle and then if the learner is following that same process to construct different kinds of triangles with different measurements, the learner is using the knowledge of construction which he or she has learnt in the past. The cognitive activity of use involves performances such as solving mathematical problems, performing experiments, classifying new examples based on their characteristics applying principles of physics or chemistry and solving problems which are based on them, etc. 
and find is a performance that requires a learner to derive or invent something new. The next category of performance dimension is find. The performance at the level of find involves creating something new or inventing something new. It involves performances such as writing an essay, creating a lesson plan, coming up with a different recipe altogether, devising an innovative strategy, constructing a working model, generating a new computer based application, suggesting solutions of a problem, etc. The performance at the level of find involves creating something new or generating something new. Uh, it is of course done based on the existing schema. That is it is done based on whatever knowledge the learner has already acquired. Let's take an example to understand it better. Let's say the learner has learnt about uh, how the volcano erupts. The construction of volcano and different vent and the magma and the lava and how the pressures change and how the uh, lava erupts from the mouth of the volcano. All these things theoretically they have learnt looking at the pictures which are given in the book. Now based on this information if the student or maybe a group of students are making a working model of a volcano where after they put a certain things into it, the, it actually shows the uh, eruption of a volcano, how the volcano erupts. Of course, using different things and not the real uh, lava and the magma. But if they are uh, constructing some working model like that, that performance of the learners is at the level of find. Let us see the types of content in detail first. This matrix shows types of content in a column which are facts, concepts, procedure and principles. Facts are arbitrarily associated pieces of information. They are assumed to be true. You cannot prove them to be true. If you read information about facts, they are taken as they are. Nobody questions facts. Facts are also presented without any support. They are just presented as pieces of information. Facts are not further exemplified, it is stated, they are remembered. Time, dates, places, names, statistical information, certain specifications about something are facts. Let us see some more examples of facts. New Delhi is the capital of India, Hindi the national language of India, color codes in a signal system, names of different freedom fighters, names of parts of an organ systems, etc. are facts. Now let's go ahead and see the second content type which is concept. Concepts are group of objects, elements or in a different information which is connected with each other. The different parts that make up concepts cannot make sense independently. Whereas if we go back to facts, then these factual information that we know independently they make sense. Whereas for a learner to be able to understand the concept, it is very important that entire concept is explained as a wholesome concept. There are different examples, concepts are explained using different examples or uh, explanations are required to understand concepts. They need to be explained by the teacher and understood by the learner. They are described using examples and non-examples. Let us see some examples of concepts. Knowledge of whole numbers, uh, integers and fractions uh, that because they can be placed into a category of rational numbers, these um, together may make up a concept of whole numbers. Knowledge of variety of types of literature, parts of sentences, kinds of psychological problems, functions of different parts of a plant, hot and cool colors, democracy, characteristics or features of paintings from renaissance, organ systems of human body, the causes and effects of second world war, all these are concepts. All these are examples of concepts. Now when you look at them individually you will realize that all these cannot be understood just by mere reading. You need to understand it, someone needs to explain it or whatever text you are reading that has to be a quite explanatory with lots of examples it needs to be explained. So whenever any uh, content or subject matter needs a lot of information and uh, explanation with examples, non-examples, uh, it is referred to as concepts. Now let's go ahead and look at the third content type which is procedures. Procedures as the name suggests 
these are sequence of steps that one needs to perform in order to do something. There are also events, stages or uh, processes that take place over a period of time. When we think of processes or procedures, we always uh, think that there, it's a hard and fast rule to follow that uh, those uh, steps in a particular sequence. It's not necessary like that. There are several processes which you may have come across while teaching or while learning or the sequence of those steps also could be changed or the step itself could be altered a little bit. But uh, to perform that entire task, there is a definite, uh, it, to perform that entire task, one certainly needs to follow some kind of a procedure. So that kind of content falls into the category of procedures. How to do or how this particular thing works, these kind of information are examples of processes. Procedures or processes are best described using flowcharts. Let us see some examples of procedures. Steps to make a cup of tea, steps to draw an equilateral triangle, steps to solve an equation, directions to reach a destination, working of a turbine, the process of mummification, ripening of a mango, all these are examples of procedures. Now if you look at these examples once again, you will realize that there are some processes on which we have a control. There are some procedures on which we have a control. For example, making of a tea. You can decide the procedure when to, uh, uh, whether to add tea leaves to boiling water first or whether to add sugar to the boiling water first. That those procedures can be decided, they are under your control. Whereas there are certain procedures which are not under your control. For example, ripening of a mango. If a mango, although people enhance, try to enhance the or make the process of uh, ripening of a mango faster, but it is a natural process. No one can really control with what speed that process will take place. Such pieces of content are referred to as processes. But component display theory combines these two things under the category of procedures. Let us go ahead and see the next type of content which is principles. Principles are explanations or predictions about why things happen in the world. They explain a lot of phenomena that take place in our world around us. They are rules. They guide certain actions to explain some changes. They also involve the cause and effect relationship and are used to interpret events. Let us see some examples of principles. Different laws, for example, Newton's laws of motion, Ohm's law, Archimedes principle, all these are examples of principles. Rules of tennis, cricket or any other game for that matter. Tips for baking a light spongy cake, rules of examination, Effect of climate on vegetation, see it has a cause and effect. Any other examples that show cause and effect relationship or rules are examples of principles. Once again, let's take a look at the performance content matrix. You must have noticed that the use and find of fact is darkened. It is because facts can only be remembered. They cannot be presented in any other form or one cannot create facts. That is the reason the use and find cells of fact are darkened. Let us take a look at the performance content matrix with some entries into the matrix. While mapping the performances of the learners into the matrix, one can write performances as shown here or one can also write learning objectives in those cells. Uh, this matrix gives an idea to the instructor or a teacher about whether he or she has tapped all the types of content that was there in the chapter. It also gives an opportunity to the instructor to assess if all kinds of performances related to the considered content are covered. Let us summarize what we have learned just now. The component display theory suggests three major things. First is the content dimension. Different types of content like facts, concepts, procedures and principles. Facts are simple facts or simple bits of information which holds meaning of their own. Actually, when these different facts get connected to create a larger meaning out of it, which cannot be presented disconnectedly, which wholesomely makes its own meaning, they become concepts. 
the other type of content which is procedures is whenever uh, in content uh, which we teach to the learners we always see that there are certain procedures that are to be followed which is a collection of different steps that makes the procedures then comes the principles where principles include types of content which have uh, certain rules or certain laws uh, which are given or which are a part of content are uh, principles the second type of dimension which is a performance dimension is suggested by the component display theory there are three types of performances that the theory identifies one is remember second is use and third is find remember is associated with recalling the knowledge from the learner's memory or identifying things uh, which are present to the learner basically the learner uses schema that exists in the learner's mind second performance which is use is associated with uh, using the existing knowledge or using the learned knowledge into familiar situations or new situations we have seen examples like solving equations or identifying things that are happening in the world with the knowledge or the theories or the principles that the learners have learned the third performance is find which is creating something new or innovating something new from of course from the knowledge that already exists with the learner the next thing which is proposed by david merrill uh, is in this uh, component display theory is a matrix the performance content matrix using this matrix the teachers can create this matrix and identify the different performances and the content the teachers can use this matrix to identify the content and its related performance and map all the learning objectives or whatever they intend to teach the learners into this matrix once this matrix is created or it is all the cells of the matrix are filled with the content and the related performances it gives a idea to the instructor about what is it that the learner uh, intends to learn or what is it that the teacher can teach to the learners what kind of learning objectives could be achieved this gives an idea to the instructor about whether the uh, instructor is focusing on remember or are they uh, or is she or he trying to reach higher level of learning objectives which uh, gives an opportunity to the learner to create something new to invent something new to use the knowledge in newer situations it gives uh, that actually helps the instructor to achieve learning of the learners in the real sense with this we come to the end of learning about component display theory which is suggested by david merrill thank you